welcome to this video and it's a really important video and it's really good news now if you don't want to watch this video I'm going to give you the bottom line there's a drug I've been using for years I can remember giving it way back in the early 80s probably even before that and it's called dexamethasone and I now know that dexamethasone reduces the death rate in people that have got severe respiratory complications in COVID-19 disease and I said a no, don't, not a think, because we've got the data for this now, that the results are back. This is seriously good news. So dexamethasone, just a relatively small dose given once a day in patients that require mechanical ventilation for COVID-19, it reduces their death rate by a third. A third less of them die. And in patients who require oxygen therapy but don't need ventilated, but their, their condition is so bad that they need supplementary oxygen to keep themselves going, to keep the blood oxygen levels up, it reduces deaths in that group by a fifth. Now, in people that don't need respiratory support, it doesn't help them at all. This is for people that need help with respiratory support for this, this cytokine storm that can happen. It reduces the inflammation. So this is really good news. Now, dexamethasone, we've been using it for ages. It's off license. It's a simple molecule. It's in a group of drugs called steroids. And I strongly suspect that factories all around the world now are producing this stuff by the ton. In the NHS, we've got 200,000 doses or 200,000 courses rather in reserve. So this is ready, available. It's dirt cheap. It can save a lot of lives and this has got massive implications for the global fight against COVID-19 death. That's what this video is about. Now one sad thing before we go into the detail is if we'd known this just a few months ago we could have saved perhaps up to 5,000 lives in the UK. But of course we didn't, that's why we do the clinical trials. Now we know. This is the first time that a treatment has been demonstrated by empirical means, by a randomised double-blind controlled trial to show that we can reduce mortality in people that have got severe respiratory complications in COVID-19. It's, it's, it's a big one. It's big news. It's going to save a lot of lives. This is seriously good news. Now, if you don't want to watch the rest of this video, I feel sorry for you, but go away and do something else. Everyone else that's got uh, interest in this, we're going to look at some details now. Now this is part of the recovery trial which is a collaboration in the NHS with Oxford University. So we've got very very good researchers and the title of this paper, don't take my word for it, go to the original source, this is the original publication here, see what the original researchers are saying, low cost dexamethasone reduces death by up to a third in hospitalised patients with severe respiratory complications of COVID-19. Now this is for poorly patients in hospital, the 5 or 6 or 7% of patients that need to go to hospital. Now do not go and ask your GP for dex dexamethasone, it's, this is not for people who are just a bit ill, this is for people with respiratory complications who need oxygen or who need ventilated. And whatever you do, don't try and buy dexamethasone via unofficial means. Um, if you do not have COVID-19, dexamethasone is not going to stop you getting COVID-19. If you do have COVID-19, it's not going to help cure it. This is not antiviral. This is for people with the respiratory complications. But of course, this is the way that most people die. People that die from COVID-19 die of these respiratory complications. So this is a drug for use in hospital to be prescribed by doctors administered by registered nurses and doctors and looked after where people can look after these patients effectively it's an in-hospital drug but it's got the potential to well it will it will save lots and lots of lives so remember it's an in-hospital drug it's not for everyone at home and it's for these specific indications this is the reasons we give it now on the 8th of june the dexamethasone arm of this study was halted they stopped it and the reason they stopped it was the experts realised they had enough evidence to say that it worked. It can save lives. For the first time, we know we have a drug which reduces death in COVID-19 complications. It's really big, good news. Now, the experimental group. Now, the experimental group is the group that get the treatment. 
The control group is the group we compare those with. And we've looked at this principle of doing clinical trials before in these videos. So the experimental group are the group that actually got the drug. These are the intervention group. They were given the drug. 2,104 patients randomized to dexamethasone group. So these are the group that were given the drug. And this is a good number. We get good data from numbers of this size. And they were prescribed simply dexamethasone, 6 milligrams, not, not a huge dose, once a day for 10 days. That's it. That's the treatment. 6 milligrams of dexamethasone once a day for 10 days. That's it. Simple. Now the intravenous, it was given intravenously or orally. Now people on intensive care on ventilators, of course, can't swallow tablets, obviously. So they're given it intravenously. Um, and this is absolutely routine. We give intravenous drugs all the time on, on intensive care situations. Uh, absolutely routine. And it was given to orally. It was given orally just via a tablet. I think it's two milligram tablets. So presumably they gave three two milligram tablets um, of this drug. And uh, that was given orally to people that were less poorly and were able to, uh, to swallow normally. So that's the um, experimental group, over 2,000 people. Now, the control group that they compare those two was even larger. So the control group was 4,321 patients randomly assigned to usual care. So these patients in the control group were given usual care, the oxygen therapy and whatever else they needed, plus the dexamethasone. These patients were just given the best available conventional care, but not the dexamethasone. So they were the two groups, the experimental group being compared with the control group to see how it worked. And of course, what was found out was the people in the experimental group did better than the people in the control group. That's what was found out, that the drug is working. Remarkably good news. Now, the usual care alone group, this is the group that just receive the usual care without the dexamethasone and this is their 28 day mortality so this group were followed up for 28 days those who required mechanical ventilation within 28 days 41 percent of those died so the people that needed mechanically vent ventilated four weeks later 41 percent of them had died those who required only additional oxygen without the need for ventilation. In other words, they're able to inhale and exhale on their own without the air actually being blown into their lungs via a ventilator. The ones who required the additional oxygen, 25% of those had died. Those who did not require any respiratory intervention, 13% of those had died. So that was the situation. So how did dexamethasone improve this picture? Well, dexamethasone, six milligrams once a day, reduced deaths by one third in the ventilated patients. Now, the rate uh, ratio is, is 0 0.65. In, in other words, they were 35% less likely to die. 35% less likely to die. Now, the p-value here is important. Now, the p-value is the probability that this arose by chance. So is it just good luck that these ones did, uh, did better than these ones? Is that just good luck or, or, or is there a real difference between the two groups? Well, this p-value is p equals 0 0.003. So that means there was a 3 out of 10,000 chance that this result arose by chance. In other words almost certainly did not arise by chance. So a very high probability that this is a genuine result. Only three chances in 10,000 that this result arose by chance. This is well accepted data. Reduced deaths by one fifth in patients receiving oxygen only. So the benefit for patients just receiving oxygen wasn't as great. And the rate ratio there was 80%. In other words, 20% of those, there was a reduced mortality of 20%.
So that reduced mortality by 35% in the ventilated group. Mortality was reduced by 20% in those that just needed oxygen. But this is a significant difference still. And the p-value there, the probability that this is not a genuine result is p equals 0.001, which is a 2.1 out of a thousand that this is that this result arose by chance. In other words, it's a good result. So these patients are 35% less likely to die if they're ventilated. These patients who only required the oxygen, 20% less likely to die. A, a big highly significant, statistically significant difference. No benefit in patients who did not require respiratory support. Interesting. So that means that this is to do with the, to, to do with combating the respiratory complications. And it actually makes perfect sense because as we've looked at quite a few times on this videos, we need these air, we have these air sacs in our lungs, the alveoli, highly enfolded air sacs like this. And the air goes in and the air goes out of these air sacs. And the oxygen goes from the air sacs into the blood and the carbon dioxide goes from the blood into the air sacs to be breathed out, these alveolar air sacs. Now the problem is in COVID-19 sometimes we can get excessive inflammation excessive inflammation and this is me mediated by what we call cytokines these chemicals that communicate from one cell to the other and this is sometimes called a cytokine storm so this abnormal inflammatory reaction and what this means is the inside of the alveoli and the blood vessels round about them the whole lung really becomes inflamed becomes inflamed and inflammation is characterized by heat pain redness swelling and loss of function and particularly here we are interested in swelling because fluid accumulates in the alveoli which means essentially the patient drowns so the inflammation mediated by this cytokine storm causes this and we've known for ages that dexamethasone is a well-known steroidal based anti-inflammatory it cancels out the inflammation, cancels out the cytokine storm, prevents the inflammation. So as well as having this empirical evidence base that it works, it also makes perfect sense in what we know about the, the pharmacodynamics of dexamethasone, the way this drug works. I used it years and years and years ago for treating patients with uh, brain tumours. It reduces the swelling around brain tumours. And it's also used for things like rheumatoid arthritis and other inflammatory conditions. So we know this reduces swelling. It's one of the characteristic features of this drug. And this works out that one death would be prevented uh, by uh, treatment of eight ventilated patients. And one death would be prevented by treatment of 25 patients requiring oxygen alone. That, that's called the number to treat. That's the way that works out. So cheap, effective. Dexamethasone is the first drug to be shown to improve survival in COVID-19. This is the first time we have known. Up until now, we've been guessing. Now, right since the start of this, doctors have been doing what we call um, compassionate prescribing. They think, well, you know, this patient's probably going to die. I tell you what, I'm going to try this drug. And that's the right thing to do. But basically, they've been guessing. Yes, guessing based on perhaps years of clinical experience. But of course, no one's got years of experience of COVID-19 because it's a novel virus. No one knew. They were guessing. Now we know. First drug to be shown to improve survival in COVID-19. The first one. Proper evidence. Uh, and now the uh, writers say this is an extremely welcome result, obviously. <laughs> These are the people carrying out the study. The survival benefit is clear and large in those patients who are sick enough to require oxygen. So good survival benefit, definitely there if patients are sick enough to require oxygen or sick enough to require mechanical ventilation. Dexamethasone should now become standard in the care of these patients. So these recommendations are strong enough that 
doctor should read these recommendations and start prescribing accordingly. The evidence is now in place. Dexamethasone is cheap as chips, it's on the shelf, can be used immediately to save lives worldwide. And as I say, as we speak now, I'm sure factories are turning out tons and tons of this stuff. It's easy to make, it's cheap. And when I say tons, they can make literally tons of this drug. It's easy to make, it's off license. It's really not a problem. We can save a lot of lives with this knowledge. This knowledge I'm giving you now will save a lot of lives. And if we'd had this knowledge three, four months ago, we could have saved 5,000 lives in the UK alone. This is going to save a whole load of lives today, tomorrow, next week, next month. And I would be amazed if doctors aren't prescribing this drug all around the world as we speak because of the quality of this evidence. Dexamethasone reduces the risk of death among patients with severe respiratory complications. This is what they conclude. The authors who are scientists, this is a direct quote, this is not the way scientists normally speak. It is fantastic that the first treatment demonstrated to reduce mortality is one that is instantly available and affordable worldwide. There is absolutely no reason why anyone in the world should not have access to this drug. And I call on everyone, on everyone who's got any influence on this in any way, shape or form to make this drug available to every hospital in the world who has responsible doctors who can prescribe this drug where it can be given safely. If people die now through a lack of dexamethasone, that is an indictment on humanity. This needs to be done now. Sir Patrick Valance, who is the chief, chief scientific officer in the UK. This is tremendous news today from the recovery trial showing that dexamethasone is the first drug to reduce mortality from COVID-19. It is particularly exciting as this is an inexpensive, widely available medicine. That's Sir Patrick Valance's view, and I agree with that. Uh, he goes on to say, this is a groundbreaking development in our fight against the disease and the speed at which researchers have progressed. Finding an effective treatment is truly remarkable. It shows the importance of doing high quality clinical trials and basing decision on, decisions on the results of those trials. This is now evidence based. Sadly, we know that 500 lives could have been saved in the UK had we known this before. But of course, there's no way any, anyone in the world could have known this because it's a novel virus. But now we do. The challenge now is to get this out around the world to responsible prescribers. In the UK, there's 200,000 courses of the drug sitting on the shelves waiting to be used. So we've got enough of that. Now I hear you say, what about remdesivir? Didn't that, wasn't that proved to work? Yes. Remdesivir appears to shorten the recovery time. It is available on the National Health Service and studies appear to show, there's fairly good evidence, evidence for this, that it reduces the duration of symptoms from 15 to 11 days on average. So remdesivir reduces the duration of symptoms but appears to have no reduction in mortality. So yes, of course, if you say to me, would you like to be symptomatic for 11 days or would you like to be symptomatic for 15 days? Of course, I'll choose to be symptomatic for four days less. Of course. So that's good. But my chances of dying are the same. But with dexamethasone, survival is actually improved. So this is remarkably good results from the recovery trial. And we need to do this now worldwide. So there you go. Dexamethasone works. Saves lives. Cheap. Readily available. Well understood. Doses are known. Everyone knows how to prescribe it. Everyone knows how to give it. Ready to go. Rock and roll. Save lives. Brilliant. Good. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm excited. I think that's just fantastic news. Now, there's a few people that are special to me. And of course, it's you who watch these videos, otherwise there'd be no point whatsoever. 
So this is Florence and Art in Lake Tahoe, California. Doesn't that look beautiful? Now, apparently Florence and Art sent me a picture in ages ago and somehow, due to my gross incompetence, I seem to uh, not exactly know where it is. <laughs> but I'm glad you're watching the videos regularly in, uh, in such a beautiful part of the world, in uh, California. So thank you for watching uh, Florence and Art in California. Ah, this is Frida from uh, Sweden. Uh, so Frieda's, Frieda's got the graph there of Sweden that we looked at uh, just about 12 hours ago, actually. I don't know what this means, but Frieda looks like a very sensible young lady, so I'm sure it's the right thing to do. So that's uh, Frieda from Sweden. Delighted you're watching, Frieda. Thank you for sending that in. Uh, this is Jeff from Oakland's, which is in California, isn't it? It's Bay Area, California, isn't it? Is Oakland the one just across the bay from San Francisco or Los Angeles? I get them mixed up. Anyway, you know where you are, Jeff. I'm sure it's California anyway. Glad to see you watching. Glad to see you taking vitamin D. I believe that will have a protective effect. Looking forward to more data on that soon. But thanks for watching in Oakland. Oh, yeah, th th this was the, uh, the, uh, the people in South Africa. <laughs> I'm giving the company a plug this time is <laughs> that they've been rather kind to me as they uh, they watch my uh, videos so great to know you guys are watching in <clears throat> South Africa ah this is uh, Julia and uh, Alec uh, in Zambia. Now, Julia goes round, I think she's an agricultural advisor, and this is her garden, isn't it? Well, much tidier than my allotment, I must say. And uh, uh, you watch, I know, in Zambia, so I'm delighted to see that you are watching in Africa. Good news. Thank you for watching. Uh, this is uh, Nicolas, who watches in <laughs> Sweden. <coughs> Always good to know people are watching in Sweden. Thank you for the picture. And I'm delighted to see you're wearing a mask as people in Sweden have been known not to always wear masks. But I'm glad you are. And this is Tony in uh, San Francisco. Tony said it was a particularly hot day and he's on the train. And of course, because it's on public transport, very responsibly, Tony is wearing a mask, which I'm delighted to see thank you tony for the picture 